Throughout the history of mankind, we've only invented, really, three truly great things. And that's beer, yoga pants, and zip ties. These are amazing, you can do anything with these. And right now, I'm gonna show you how to take a few of these, a pair of flush cut pliers, and together, we're gonna make an awesome set of spark plug wire separators that'll impress anyone who looks at your engine. You ready for this? This will be the cheapest and easiest tip I ever give you on this show. Let's make some spark plug wire separators. So you start out by putting the big one around all of the spark plug wires you want to separate. Then get them in order. Once you've got the spacing the way you want it, take the small zip ties, wrap it around the big one in between each wire. Now notice everything is still loose, so you can slide this forward and back, get it where you want it, and then, once you're happy with the placement, pull the long ones tight, get everything situated again, and one by one, pull the short ones tight. There, now everything's secure, it won't slide, it won't move. Now it's time to cut the tails, and you want to use a flush cut pair of pliers. These ones are from Exolite. I bought them in an electronic store somewhere for like 10 bucks. You use these because they cut the tails nice and short. And you want them nice and short, otherwise the next time you're in here working, you're going to scratch yourself and bleed all over your chrome, which sucks. Nobody wants that. Check it out. Dirt cheap spark plug wire separators. There's about 50 cents in that whole operation. Tell your friends. See that? This is Lennox Tube Lube, which is fantastic for lubricating drill bits, saw blades, whether you're milling, drilling, sawing, whatever. This works. It also costs 20 bucks a tube. So you know what I like to use? Bar soap. Shea butter. Normally, I'm an Irish spring man for obvious reasons, but this works too. My wife's gonna be pissed. So I want that quarter inch hole to turn into a three eighths hole so I can bolt this to a cylinder head. I don't want to use a regular drill bit. Watch what happens when you stick that drill bit in that hole. Okay, so I want to enlarge that hole. Obviously, I'm going to stick this in the vise. Watch what happens when you use a standard drill bit going to wind that into a pretzel. Look at that. Ruined. Perfectly good cushion clamp. Junk. Now I'm going to show you how to drill that hole out without ruining the clamp. So you take your clamp, fold it over, and get the bolt holes to line up as best you can. The better the alignment, the better your odds are of pulling this off. Okay, now we're going to stick this in the vise again, just like we did before. Except this time, instead of using a standard drill bit, we're going to use a stepped bit. And this bit will drill this bit will drill through this without ruining the clamp.
exactly. We just went through one step. Now we're going to flip it over. And we'll go through the other side now. See that? Now you can buy these clamps with bigger holes in them, but in a pinch, if you don't have the right one and the store is closed, there's your drill bit, there's your hole. Now I don't fish at all, but fishing tackle boxes make great part storage bins. Like this one here is just for rebuilding carburetors. Got compartments for floats. Accelerator pump diaphragms, power valves, gaskets, metering block, and fuel bowl gaskets. It all fits neatly in there, and these are dirt cheap. And they're easy to carry, too. So here's a twofer. It ain't Halloween. That's not why I'm dressed like this. These are Kevlar sleeves and gloves that you can wear when you're working on hot engines. And you can get these at jegs.com from companies like uh, Impact Racing. I think these are from Simpson. Dirt cheap and will save your skin when you bump into a hot header or grab onto some hot spark plugs. And if you've done like I've done and mounted an engine like this Hemi that's way too big for this Chevy, you can get your brake booster off if you mount it with steel braided flexible brake lines. Now I know they swell. This isn't the kind of thing you want to use for road racing, but for a car that drag races and only has to stop at the end of the track, you can put about 16 inches of brake line there that's flexible and it really isn't going to hurt the car's braking performance that much. But what it is going to allow you to do is get this thing off the firewall quickly so that you can get that valve cover off that engine. Check it out. It won't stop you from dropping everything on the ground though. less than a minute, I could have this off the firewall and get the valve covers off the motor to check the valve lash, get the spark plugs out, whatever I need to do. And I'm only giving up a little bit of braking performance because these are about 16 inches long. So again, not for road racing, but for drag racing, it's okay. All right, so my bargain parts store spark plug socket doesn't want to get the plug out of the Hemi. And the rubber's in there, it's just not grabbing. So I'll reach for my other bargain parts store tool purchase, which is the mini magnet on a stick. 99 cent bin, look at that. Got my plug out. So let's talk about reading spark plugs, which is a very important part of being a hot rodder. If you don't know how to do this, you will never go fast. I don't care if you have EFI or, or if there's a ten tornado. Is that a tornado siren? This isn't Oklahoma. <laughs> I didn't move here for this shit. I'm gonna go hide. Reading spark plugs is paramount to being a hot rodder. If you cannot do this, and I don't care if you have EFI, 1202 sensors, and all the gauges in the world, you're not going to go as fast as you could as if you read one of these properly, because these don't lie. These tell you what your engine's doing, what it doesn't like, and what it does like. And here's a tip. 
if some guru does this and tells you how your engine's running, run away from that person. Because this, this don't work. You can't see this and go, yeah, I know what this engine needs. You need tools for that. I'll show you right now. Now I have bought three different kinds of quote-unquote spark plug viewers from the pros. And none of them work as good as this $20 autoscope that I got from DrMom.com. This is the tool that a doctor uses to look down the ear, nose, and throat of patients to make sure they're not dying. I use the thing to look down at the bottom of the porcelain to find the fuel ring in my spark plug. And I also use it to get a close-up look at the timing mark on the ground strap to decide whether my engine is running rich or lean, whether it has too little timing, not enough timing, that's my go-to. The only other surefire way that I'm convinced of finding that information out is to cut the threads off the spark plug so that you can see in the bottom. Get one of these, $20, DrMom.com, or cut the threads off your spark plug and know for sure. Here's a foolproof way to put AN fittings and hoses together without screwing up that precious finish. Put a little bit of air tool oil on the threads of the hose end. Start threading it together by hand. Now at some point this is going to get difficult and the worse the mismatch between the hose end and the hose, the harder this gets. If you buy the hose, from the fitting supplier, usually these things fit together really well. All right, so we've still got that much left to thread together. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna grab two wrenches. I'm gonna tape the jaws of the wrenches right here. And note, these particular wrenches are from Craftsman. They don't have serrated jaws, which is good. I'm going to put the wrench in the vise. Now, you can hold... I'll put too much tape on there. Hold on. Too much wrap. Not wrap music, just too much tape. Okay. in there. I'm going to use a little less tape on the other wrench. One piece only. Okay. Then, I'm going to use a bigger wrench with more tape. I'm going to use this one. I swear this works. It's an actual tip. Rather than edit this and tell you to use adjustable wrenches, I'm just going to accept the fact that I look like a retard right now. Alright. And now we tighten. Over and over and over again. without screwing up the black anodized finish of our fitting. And if you do screw up the anodized finish, you can be cheesy. If it's black, you can use a black Sharpie. If it's red or blue, you can use a red or blue Sharpie. And if your fittings are 20 years old, or two weeks old, and they've been sitting out in the sun in the back of the boat, and they've turned pink, well, then you're out of luck. There really isn't a good Sharpie color for red anodizing that's turned pink. Okay. So let's get it perfectly lined up so that it looks cool. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to show you is if you go with the new nylon braided stuff, you can go to Home Depot and buy these cutters right here. And these make short work of cutting these things down. No death wheel needed. Nice, right? All right, that's it for this episode of Finnegan's Garage. I'll be back 
maybe next Monday with some other mediocre tips you may or may not need. Let's talk about reading spark plugs. A very important of...